modern western civilization has an unwritten unwritten conception of the end of history which is connected with the holy land there is an actor at work in modern western civilization which is constantly using modern western civilization to achieve his objective there is an actor at work in modern western civilization there is an actor at work i recognize that actor to be the false messiah the jal We were told about a divine promise which was communicated to the Israelite people that Allah was going to send a prophet who would be known as Al-Masih, the Messiah, and who would rule the world with justice confirmed by Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. He would be Hakimun Adil. He would rule the world with justice from the throne of Nabi Dawood alayhi salam, the Prophet David, and with a rule which would be eternal. The Israelite people understood that if the Messiah was to fulfill this divine promise, there were certain logical implications which followed. Number one, that he would have to liberate the Holy Land. Number two, that he would have to bring the believers back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. Number three, that he would have to restore the Holy State of Israel, founded by David and Solomon, Allah's blessings be upon them. And number four, that this Holy State of Israel would have to become once again the ruling state of the world. And then the Messiah could rule the world from the throne of David alayhi salam with a rule which would be eternal. What they did not know and no one knew for 600 years no one knew until the Quran came down was that no they did not kill him no they did not crucify him but rather appearance and reality were completely opposite. And Allah raised him. And one day he's coming back. When he comes back, he is going to rule the world. He will rule the world with justice. And he will rule the world from the holy state of Israel. Built on the foundations of the religion of Abraham. And that is Islam. And his rule will be eternal will descend from the heavens with his hands resting on the wings of two angels. At that time when he comes down, it would be as he came the first time. The first time that he came, he came in front of his cousin, John the Baptist. And the divine wisdom ordained that John would say, here he is. This is the man you've been waiting for. This is the Messiah. And so a method of positive identification. And so history repeats itself when he comes back. When he comes back, he'll come back before another similarly divinely appointed individual who would be a worldly leader while the son of Mary will be a spiritual leader of that last age. That individual was described as the rightly guided leader. Imam means leader. Mahdi, rightly guided. Constantly in the news we had 
true terms. The new world order and globalization. How many times do you hear these terms? The new world order, globalization. Both of them indicate a development in the human being where there is so much integration. The world has become a small world. And there is six degrees of separation between me and between you. In such an environment where there is a new world order, that world order, is it looking to prepare and pave the way for the Imam? Or are they looking to destroy the message of the Imam? As in when you read about the new world order, materialistically globalization is a reality. But spiritually there must be another discussion happening. That new world order you will find in many cases have already started to try and demolish the message of the Imam. And the undertones are there in many of the media industry about the undertones to finish this messianic concept. Therefore you find on all of these levels, what do we see? We see that the discussion of the utopia is a fundamental discussion. Every one of the world religions today believes that one day there will be a state which will be a state of justice where tyranny will be completely removed. If you look for example within Hindu thought or within Zoroastrian thought or within Jewish thought or within Christian thought or within Islamic thought each one of these religions postulates a theory that there will one day be an ideal state a state where there will be no poverty a state where there will be no misery and a state where a messianic figure will bring success for God's chosen people and if you look within the religion of Islam the idea is given within each and every school of the religion of Islam that the Mahdi will be the one who establishes the perfect state this discussion is a contemporary discussion, not a historical one. Why? Because the belief in the Mahdi is a belief obligatory on every Muslim. Every Muslim in the world today, it's obligatory on them according to their scholars to believe in the Messiah that is the Mahdi. Yes, some believe he is born and others believe he is yet to be born. But you must believe in him as the reality of someone who will bring justice to the earth. That's why we should be organizing conferences every year where we invite every Imam of every school in Islam and we invite the leaders of other religions and tell them come sit next to us let us discuss our Mahdi and let's discuss your Mahdi as well because don't think that in Hinduism or Sikhism they don't have a Mahdi there is a Mahdi at the very core of the Indian subcontinent a Messiah who opened justice it's a Muslim and a non-Muslim issue Therefore, when we talk of this utopia, the builders right now are not all Muslims. The builders right now are any human being who is seeking to promote godly values on earth.
He is the final Imam and Khalif of this world. He will raise an army to challenge the final arrival of the Antichrist Dajjal.